What's up, everybody? I'm Jane Sawyer, and this is Jane Sawyer Makes Some Wall Dark Miniatures. So last week, I showed you how to split open a walnut, DIY a little hinge, and assemble that together to make a cute little walnut box. This week, I'm going to share five projects that I hope will inspire you to try making your own walnut miniatures. I'm going to walk you through them step by step. Let's just really G jump into it. I'm using a craft knife to score and break a semicircle off these big craft sticks I bought at a discount store. Then I'm using a nail file to clean up the edge. By great good fortune, these happen to slot perfectly into my nutshell. I used dollar store five minute epoxy to hold them in place, but lots of types of glues would work. I used a little crescent shape to make a desk and I stained those with some watered down burnt sienna paint. I glued some crushed tea leaves around the seams. I made a custom fit stand for my walnut diorama by pushing the nut into a blob of clay. I used super glue to attach a little thread to hold the lid up at a right angle. Next, I made a little cauldron just like my mom used to use. I pushed a ball of black polymer clay onto the end of a pen. I blended in a little worm of clay for the cauldron's rim, then carefully wiggled it off of the pen. I used this carrot-shaped bit of brown clay to make a spoon. It's really challenging to sculpt things this tiny, so I just kept it rustic. To make some spell books, uh, I have this old novel. I've been mining it for crafts for a few years. I ripped out a few pages. They're still glued together at the edge. So I just carved out a tiny book and used some construction paper to make covers. As tiny as these ones look, they were far too big for my walnut. So uh, off camera, I ended up cutting about two or three books out of each of these. I used the other margin of my book pages to make some tiny scrolls. I rolled them around this pin tool to get them started, then I tied them with a sewing thread. This was so fiddly, even though I have a freakishly tiny hands, uh, trying to do this on camera, I swear it felt like I was wearing oven mitts. I could have just glued them, but I was determined. The tiny potion bottles were deceptively easy to make. I started with a light bulb shaped blob of clay and used a toothpick to roll and narrow out the neck of the bottle. I think these pre-baked corks really sell the look. If you're using air dry clay instead of polymer, you can cut off the pointy end of a toothpick for a cork instead. I made a variety of bottle shapes and colors. I decided to glue down the items in my diorama. Everything is so, so tiny. I just couldn't imagine trying to reset this up all the time. I used white glue and thankfully it dries clear because I was getting it all over the place. It's hard to get a sense on camera of just how tricky it was to work in this tiny space. I made the tiny chair off camera, but I have a whole video making tiny chairs coming up soon. You can subscribe and turn notifications on if you're interested in seeing that. This ring box was one of the more popular projects on my Instagram. I think I might have inspired some proposals, guys. And it starts with a scrap of dollar store foam board. I got started by peeling the paper off the front and the back of the foam board. I roughly traced around half the nutshell, then trimmed that shape down until I could fit it inside the nut. I beefed up that shape with a second layer of foam board. Once I checked the fit, I laminated the two layers together with a thin layer of white glue and let it dry really well. When it was good and dry, I sliced it into two pieces and cut out a small scrap of this flannel plaid. 
Here in Canada, where I live, flannel plaid is traditionally our most romantic fabric, but you could use almost any soft, thin fabric here. I placed the foam pieces face down on the back side of the fabric, pulled the edges around, and glued them to the underside. If you try this, you want to work on opposite sides, kind of like you tighten the lug nuts on a spare tire. Ugh. How's that for an analogy? I use the glue pretty sparingly and trim the fabric as I go. When I finish, I've got these two little pillow things and I just kind of wrestled them back into the nut. You might have to use a ring to open the gap between the pillows a little bit. I used my engagement ring here. She's been helping me craft since 2007 and still going strong. I wanted to try a diorama that's a bit simpler than the apothecary and I thought an Alice in Wonderland inspired nutshell could be pretty cool. I had this little scrap of printed paper that I thought would make a great wallpaper for Alice's room. It was a bit stiff though, so I crumpled it and uncrumpled it a few times before tearing it into small strips. I used some watered down glue to paper the inside of both sides of the shell. You could easily just paint the inside of your shell instead. I used a bit of cereal box to cut a floor for Alice's room here. I tried to make a bit of an optical illusion on her checkered floor. I just colored this with some gel pens I borrowed from my daughter. I used hot glue to fill in underneath the floor. I'm making a tag for a drink me potion bottle. I found it was easier to write the tag and put the hole in the tag before cutting out the tag shape. To make Alice, I pre-baked some pointy little legs and stabbed them into some tiny black shoes. Her dress is a stubby light blue cone. I added some texture to her dress with this little tool. A few tiny rectangles made an apron. Her arms are two tiny worms with a tiny ball on the end for her hands. Her head is a pea-sized ball and her hair is some yellow spaghetti. I used this teeny ball stylus dipped in black paint to give her an eyeball. If you don't have a stylus like this, you can use a pin, a toothpick, or even a sharp pencil. I used a bit of repositionable poster tack to stick the drink bottle and Alice into the nut. While I was looking on Pinterest for some walnut craft ideas for this video, I saw someone had made a little forest and I wanted to give it a go. I used this air dry paper clay to smooth out the background of the shell. The cool thing about this clay being paper based is that when it's dry, you can paint it with watercolor paint. To create a sense of depth, I'm using my most vivid blue at the top of the nut, then blending it down to almost nothing. To make the hill appear far off in the distance, I use a yellow-brown color at the horizon and then blend it into a darker green in the foreground. These toothpicks will be my birch trees. I carved a bit of texture into them with a craft knife. This was a waste of time because after my first coat of white paint, I decided on a better way to make them look less toothpicky. I mixed some baking soda into a dollop of paint and then really caked it on for the next coat. When everything was dry, I used my craft knife to trim the tree trunks to fit. 
I stuck these in with white glue. Birch trees have these little black scars all over the bark. I just put these on with a marker pen. The crowns of the trees are some dried moss from my stash. I made the grass with some fibers from this green bun fur I had. Everything is glued in with regular old white glue. I think the forest is really cute as is, but I thought a tiny Bigfoot would make it even better. Let's make a baby dragon sleeping in a walnut. The hinge was far too shiny for the look I was going for, so I used some watered down acrylic to dirty up the shell. I used a Sharpie marker to dull down the shininess of the wire. Here's a comparison between the aged and the unaged hinges. The dragon was pretty simple to sculpt. It started as this elongated teardrop shape, then I pressed and rolled a bit to define a neck. His head is gonna curl around and rest on his tail like this. Here I am checking the fit. I used these glass head sewing pins for the eyes. I used some side cutters to cut off most of the pin, then I poked them into the dragon's head. I just gave him a hint of a beak, then added two tiny sausages for the upper eyelids. The little leaf shape makes the ear. If you don't have any sculpting tools, you could totally make this guy with just a toothpick. I gently uncoiled my dragon here and used the grip of this tool to give him a bit of a scaly texture. For the ridge down his back, you can see I flattened some small balls of clay and cut them in half to make little semicircle. I thought I was done here, so I baked him, but then I realized I'd forgotten a wing. I made this squished up triangle shape and stuck it to his back to suggest a little folded up wing. I just baked him inside the shell. If this is something you're gonna do, you should probably glue on your hinge after you bake him. I'm pretty sure that walnut shells are safe to bake, but not too sure about the epoxy I used to stick on the hinge. Uh, whenever I buy a bag of preserved moss, there's always these crumbs in the bottom of the bag. They come in handy, so I save them in this little jar. After applying a layer of glue to everything, I sprinkle those little crumbs in there. Uh, then I add a few accents of preserved reindeer moss to make our dragon cozy. I thought he needed a little something magical in the top of his shell, so I glued in this little plastic gemstone. We're gonna get on to some finished beauty shots in just a second here, but I truly hope that this video has inspired you to try making some of your own walnut miniatures. If you think I did a good job on this video, please give it a like, it would really make my freaking day. You can find the build article for all five of these walnuts on janesawyermakes.com. There's lots of free resources and templates there for you to check out. Subscribe if you're interested in more arts and crafts tutorials with affordable and easy to find supplies. I am posting here as often as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.